Hey guys, it's Neutron from 4-H Camp Bristol Hills with another episode of On the Front Green. Today we're going to be continuing with our Backpackers mini-series with a really great quick tutorial for anyone who spends a lot of time in the outdoors whether you're backpacking or not. We're going to be taking a look at getting the most out of your compass to find your way out in the outdoors. Now a lot of people think about maps when they think about compasses and it's for good reason. Pairing good map reading skills with good compass skills is a way to get the most out of your outdoor experience. A little later on in this video series, we're going to be having former camp counselor Mick Trench Wheaton uh, doing a workshop on map reading. Mick is now a forester and a surveyor with the Department of Natural Resources in Wisconsin. And he's going to be leading a workshop that goes much more in depth and, and partnering with the two. But today I just wanted to give you a quick primer on how to use your compass. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at the type of compass that we use at camp and the type that you're most likely to encounter if you head over to your local outdoor sporting goods store to pick up a new one. It's called the base plate compass, and it's the type of compass that's used most often by outdoor enthusiasts. The plastic base that everything is built on is referred to as the base plate. It's typically made clear so that you can still see the map underneath it while you're trying to use it. Within the compass, you'll also see the ring in the middle. We call it a dial or a bezel. And on the perimeter of the bezel are all of the numbers that represent the directions or the degrees that you could be traveling. In the middle of the compass is the red needle. In this particular case, it's marked with an N. That needle will always point towards the magnetic north pole. Underneath the bezel is this small hollow red arrow that we refer to as the orienting arrow. Um, and we sometimes refer to that as the shed, and we'll talk about why we call it a shed uh, in a few minutes. On the bottom of the compass, you'll also see what we call the orienting lines, and these are the red or black stripes across the bottom, and we use those to match against the grid lines on the map itself uh, if we're trying to determine a coordinate by using the map. At the top of the compass, you'll see a small line right here. We call this the indexing line. And that's how I'm going to set my bearing. So if I needed to go to, say, 240 degrees, I see my 240 there. I'm going to rotate it until 240 lines up on the indexing arrow. Extending from the indexing arrow is what we call the direction of travel arrow. And in this case, that direction of travel arrow is a black line that's etched into the mirror of my compass. This particular compass also has a declination scale. And the declination is shown by the very fine black numbers at the bottom of the bezel. Um, and that is used when we need to correct for the fact that magnetic north may not be the exact same as true north. Now in this particular case, this map tells me that the magnetic bearing is actually 14 degrees off, meaning that the direction between true north and the magnetic north is about 14 degrees difference. So I have gone and adjusted my declination scale here by 14 degrees east so that when I set my compass it's accurate to true north not to magnetic north. Now that we know the parts of the compass let's take a look at how to use this thing. First you'll need to remember that red magnetic needle is magnetic so you'll need to make sure that you keep it away from anything metal like buckles or belts things like that. You'll also want to make sure that you hold it perfectly level and flat so the needle can spin freely within the housing. If I wanted to head directly north, it would be really easy. All I'm going to do is take the direction of the red needle is pointing in. I'm going to head off that way. But if I wanted to head in any direction other than due north, it gets just a little bit trickier. If, for example, I wanted to head west, I would look for the W or the 270 degree mark, which also equals west. And I'm going to line that 270 degree mark up with the indexing arrow. Once I've done that, then I'm going to turn my whole body until the red needle lines up on top of the orienting arrow at the bottom. Some people like to call that orienting arrow the shed because it's hollow. It looks a little bit like a shed with a roof on it. So I always like to say, I'm going to park my red Corvette in the shed. That means when I line up the red needle on top of the arrow, then I'm going to take my direction of travel arrow and that is going to point me directly in that bearing. So in this case, 270 degrees west. Now I can really follow that same procedure for any bearing that's listed on the face of the bezel. Say for example, I wanted to head to 320 degrees. All I'm going to do is rotate my bezel until 320 lines up 
on the indexing arrow, turn my whole body until the red magnetic needle lines up on the orienting arrow, and follow my direction of travel arrow. Now typically compasses are marked with degree ratings every 20 degrees around the circle. 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees, and so on. But what happens if I wanted to go, say, 230 degrees? It's not going to be listed there. However, between the numbers, there's a series of white tick marks. There's little short tick marks and there's a longer tick mark in the middle of each. That longer tick mark represents the halfway point or 10 degrees between the two on either side. So 230 degrees would put me at the large tick mark between 220 and 240. If I wanted to go 234 degrees, I'm just simply going to go two tick marks further than 230 degrees to get to 234. If I wanted to go 235, I'm going to line up the gap between the 234 degree tick and the 236 degree tick mark to get 235. From there, it's the same process. I line up my orienting arrow underneath my red needle, I follow my direction of travel arrow, and I head off in that direction. Now if I actually want to travel and go off to find that place, I'm going to want to do what they call shooting a bearing. And that means I'm going to follow my direction of travel arrow, I'm going to look in that direction, and I'm going to find a landmark, a specific point on the landscape that I'm going to walk to. That'll allow me to keep a straight line between here and there. It'll also prevent me from walking through the forest while staring at my compass. Walking through the forest while staring at your compass is a good way to run into trees or fall over rocks and roots. So you want to be able to shoot your bearing, and when you get there, if you haven't gone far enough, you can shoot another bearing from there in the same direction. Look for another landmark and be able to walk towards that to keep going in that same 235 degree bearing. Honestly guys, that's about everything you need to know about using your compass for today. When Mick does his workshop on map reading a little bit later on, he'll be talking about how to pair your compass with your map so that you can figure out exactly where you are on the landscape and also how you can generate your own bearings to be able to navigate from one place to another in the outdoors. But for today, I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to use your base plate compass. I really hope you're enjoying the Backpackers mini-series. I'm going to encourage you to hit the like and the subscribe button so you can follow all the new content that we post. We try to get new videos out every Thursday throughout the course of the summer. So hopefully we'll see you around next time. Thanks so much for watching.